you know, again, I, I, Wraith King all of a sudden gets chronoed. You're like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Great. Yeah. You do have to be careful if you do pick Wraith King that you're setting up for the opponent to pick Lesh. Oh, so go, they do go, go for and Ember. Yeah. Okay. OD still in the pool. Maybe, Oof. I mean, that's actually, this, I don't know if Alliance plays OD. That's the only question I have now because it goes incredibly well with Void and it's really good against a bad and an Ember. So, uh, let's see. Some, I'm mixing my, yeah, Limp plays OD. Yeah. His, his OD is, I like Korkva's OD a lot. I'm still between old and new Alliance, but yeah, Limp's an OD player. I think, I think. Lena is probably a better pick for him in terms of comfort heroes, and he he really likes the Lena Ember Spirit matchup. They love Dazzle as well against a mid Dazzle. Spirit. Yeah, they, sure. they, they love I'm, Dazzle in hair in general, and it's also considered a hard counter. We've also Ember. just hit the uh, the Triumph Barret, by the way. All three of us have referred to Alliance yep. as Liquid or Liquid is Alliance. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just this missing. Week, but you've yeah. now completed the the, the, the Triumph. Yeah, we yeah. did mention that yesterday. Yeah, that he had to do it. Brian at some did it point. yesterday. I yep. did it day one. Well, Alan's I just, now done it day three. So I just caught myself. I recognized what I was doing, but yeah. I caught myself thinking of Koifa's <laughs> OD when in fact it is Limps that is Indeed. relevant. This is, I, I think this is one of the best, if not the best heroes in Dota in terms of just dumping damage yep. into that Chronosphere. Uh, it just makes playing heroes like a bad and that prolong the fight so much more difficult because if you're keeping your teammates alive or yourself alive, you're just feeding him damage. And at that point, you know, OD's is like, you're making me stronger, you know? And... Uh, it also has the buff up from Ogre. You have the Astral and the Arrow. I'm pretty sure this is a big misstep by VP because that's mm. too good of an OD pick. Like, it goes really well with Alliance's draft, and it's really good against your third, fourth pick. Ah, uh, but, uh, but the problem, right, historically, when you've seen a fourth pick OD is that you've only got one ban left, and there are two very popular laning counters to OD that are still in the meta, that being the Pugna and the Sniper. Yeah, I think the Pugna is probably the ban for them because it also counters your Void. You kind of have, like, some natural gap close with the Void to get rid of the Sniper, and you can also probably... I think Sniper, Mag, Ember just sounds awkward to me, so... Sounds awfully greedy. Yeah, yeah. Pug, like, Pugna kind of makes sense for a VP's draft because you have the space makers and the space takers, that balance is nice, but Sniper is not generally a hero that plays very aggressively until his team is able to group up, and that's going to be a little while since you have the Ember Mag. Hmm. I, think if, good, ban, I a, think if you ban the Pugna, you feel good about this. There might be something... It's a very nice missing. Centaur ban, by the way. I, yeah. I think that's... Again, it's a hero that we know Alliance can bring a lot of pressure in the off lane behind, and it's a hero that can sort of negate that big team fight wombo combo behind RP. Could they, could they just make this Ogre 3, like we said, and yeah, pick I th like I a defensive so. support like, like Orc? an Oracle? Yeah, I was Absolutely thinking Oracle. Oracle. I was thinking Oracle. For, against an Ember? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Bye-bye bye Flame Guard. Yeah, it's good against a Baden in lane 2 because you purge the shield off. Yep. No, I think I, I I think you absolutely that's that's kind of the OG school of drafting. You you pick a flex pick in your first four and you pivot back for that uh, fifth pick Jerax Oracle. It's not too crazy to pick support last apparently in this tournament. We've seen it yeah, a has few become times a, now. a bit more popular. TNC yeah. even did it with yeah. their last pick disruptor. The only thing surprising to me about that is is that it's taken so long. Uh, yeah. OG was doing that at yeah. the last couple of events even before. I mean, especially TI. when you're talking about ninth pick rather than tenth pick, right? You know, you don't want to waste your last pick of the entire draft with a, a support when it's supposed to win you the game. But the ninth is kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. They do ban Pugna. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's a really important ban. I, I agree. I agree. The Pugna was the ban there over the Sniper. Yeah. Uh, the Sniper, I think, is just... I think they're more likely to play the Sniper, too though. They, it's still on the table. But again, if I'm Alliance and you told me coming in that... I was going to have no one on Sniper. Let's I'm actually go. pretty happy sniper. about that. I mean, oh, come on, Paul. This is not your pubs. <laughs> that did. That has been a pub thing, by the way, for me recently. Are you confessing? I'm going to make I you confess confessing. on stream to confessing. playing five position I, I Sniper. Play, I, did, I did play five Sniper. Did you go did, like the Veil build or did, what's the I item? Did, yeah. Well, I mail stream as well. But Ooh, whatever. Bristle. Oh, Bristle. Um, okay. Yes. So the Sniper wow. hero still is on the table. They I, The reason why I thought Ogre might go off lane is because he does build these aura team fight items, but Bristleback does this as well. And they have pretty low armor heroes so far on VP. Yeah. You have this hero oh, that kind of sits in front of them and enables the Void to get a better chrono by forcing the opponent to go on him. There's like the two ideas. You have a f primary initiator, then the Void, or you have a hero like Bristle that kind of soaks attention to himself. Is is there like is there a draft winning pick here though for VP? That bristleback just gives you such a powerful combination of of team fight potential but also sustained damage. Yeah. 
Uh, this is just a very hard, I, it could be a fifth pick sniper. Do you pivot to something? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, it's tough. There you go. We knew it was coming, yep. and uh, I don't know if you're gonna have enough damage on this sniper to to dissuade the aggression from Alliance running at you. Well, I, I, I can tell you one thing, and that's we saw Alliance on the opposite side of this matchup, and Limp's sniper did not crush the OD in lane, and that pretty much decided the game. I think no one needs to go off in this mid lane or this Virtus Pro lineup is in a great deal of trouble. Yeah, I hope this is a bad in five because then yeah. what happened in that other game was the sniper got roamed on and arrowed and uh, or whatever it was ganked and by the tiny it was. It was OD tiny. Mm -hmm. And in this case, if you put the a bad in five, he can have a TP ready to react to the astral and the arrow combo to save him with the three mag. I'm curious if they... Mm. There has to be five about it. I was going to say... Uh, it's Rezo, so it's probably three Magnus. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's what they've run him on so far. Mm. So solo, a bad... Mm. Interesting. Uh, which way is this going? Gents, very quickly. Alliance, Alliance. or uh, Virtus Pro? Yeah, I got, I got Alliance. Alliance, both of you? No doubt. Very... Very direct, I like that. Uh, the being decisive today in the studio, we've decided we're going one way only, it's all on the Alliance train. Let's find out as we head into game number one. Man, you love it when a panel agrees with themselves because it just shows that they are drinking their own Kool-Aid. Uh, what do you think, Kyle? Alliance versus Virtus Pro, let's get a, a, a pro's perspective on this. Uh, I, I definitely, I like what Alliance is doing here. I think their <clears throat> draft concept works in theory against what VP is looking to do here. Whenever you're playing against these mag drafts, I think it's great to have this just beefy tank hero uh, to s oversimplify things a bit. And Void really benefits from having this hero that can run in. Um, Bristol provides vision and engagements, and it allows Void then to more... Uh, effectively uses Chrono, and also you have now disables that, you know, you can get kills without Chrono. You have Ogre synergizing with all three of your cores. It's just a really mm -hmm. nice lineup. This is this is the Alliance bread and butter, and I don't think I've... I think Nico Baby's KDA on Void is like 17 or something insane like that. So. Yeah, I think he's actually... He's also in the top three for the uh, for the Mercedes-Benz MVP vote, and, uh, and rightly so. This guy went absolutely nuts over a dream hack, and now here at ESL, Things are also looking very, very good for him. That man on the screen, Resolution, so used to saying like, oh, he'll be in the one position, really carrying the team. He's in the three role. And they actually put him on Magnus this game as well. I'm not sure. I haven't really been impressed by Resolution's Mag, to be honest, but we'll see how it plays out here. He's been, uh, you can see in the interview a little bit, you know, it's just much sheepish. I don't think VP yeah. really know their identity yet. They haven't had enough time. Yeah. What was it, Resolution? Right? like, I'm just here to have fun. Like, we just want to play and have fun. It's like, well, that's that's the old Virtus Pro motto. It's like, hey, we're going to go, yeah. we're going to play every single hero. We don't care about consequences. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we're just going to do us. And, and that's it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. When I was actually doing the qualifiers for this event, as you check out the odds, yeah, big favorites are the Alliance squad, which, yep. you know, you think back historically, <laughs> this is probably the first time we'd see something like that since, what, like TI3? Uh-huh, like, uh, yeah, Alliance and VP, like the brands going against each yeah. other to have that kind of, like, swing. I most definitely agree. Mm. This, is, this is a new alliance. This is mm. a new day. It's a yeah. new life for them. So when I was in, uh, when I was actually in Kiev doing the qualifiers for this event, I went to I went to breakfast like every day with Rezo, and he was really funny because you know he's going back to America. Know. He was gonna go play with J Storm, and he was a little <laughs> like, ah, oh, it's it's all right. But you know he, he was even <laughs> he was saying he's waiting, he's hoping for that phone call from VP. Now that he's got one, oh hold up, mid, you've got an OD in prison uh, into an arrow. Yeah, hey, there's your old classic setup from prison and arrow together, and no one. Oh, he's always got to try and keep that distance as a sniper, but it won't happen this time around. Hunskin and Limp combo Beautiful. together to get a very simple pickup on a sniper. We, and that's first blood. We haven't seen one of those in a while. I actually yeah. forgot how good that was. I mean, it's 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 OD Murana, right? But just uh -huh. another example of how this meta kind of reuses old ideas in new ways. And you sometimes forget <laughs> no one caught sleep in there. Oh, 33. Duke's long enough, he gets a little bit more duration out of that salve, and the Quill Spray stacks is uh, pretty high, and he's actually going to kill off Solo. Save died as well down the bottom lane, so a little bit wow. of an extra rotation. Marana involved once more. And 33 will die wow. to the creep wave before he's but able look, to finish it off. But, but look top, look at that creep wave, to Toby. Deny it, deny oh, it. Oh, God. One, just one, and just, just, okay. Mm. 
Okay, he needs to hit oh, harder. So he, he needs more is, than 63 it's, damage. <laughs> oh, it's so many. It, it's actually not worth the kill because of these denies. Oh my god, that hurts. Oh, it. He got there for so for some of the experience at the end, but yeah, that was that was not the dream for him. Yeah. But hey, a kill, a, a kill still. Yeah. I'm surprised we don't see Bristol picked more often. You know, a couple teams are picking it, but it's one of the few heroes that isn't yet fully in the meta that can do this, where you're not only a strong two-on-two -two laner, but if you're one-on-two, you just uh, run around, spam your quills, you're gonna farm every CS. Man, 33 Soul is really just trying to push him out of the lane with no TP scrolls. Yeah, it's like, what's, 33's gonna play the tree line. That's the only real choice here. Oh, hold up. Oh my God, Solo. Yeah, he's he's, Solo? Sta he's staying uh, pretty close. One more spray will do it. He's dead. He's in range. <laughs> Down he goes. While on bottom lane, Resolution feels like he's playing bait, but Hanskins rotated himself over. He's gone Leap as well as Arrow, so all the repositioning, and Resolution's got no escape. He went level one Shockwave and has been holding his second point. No point in Empower, no point in Skewer. Yeah, it is just not the greatest lane from VP. When you pick this Mag Hero, um, if it's a core, you want to be able to go Empower and actually contest the lane, or have some higher damage support hero that can harass. Rubik, not the ideal lane partner, especially when you're in a three-on-two situation where, look, another arrow set up. You got to skewer out of here, Rezo, uh -huh. but... No, I like this fortification from Virtus Pro. 33 is going to keep the coil spray stacks up, but he's only got one more spray to go with. Resolution will die as well. Dude, so he's 33 dead consumes the mango. And with the TP in from, from Epi Kid, 33 just has to outrun this. The arrow will connect over on save, so he'll die at the rune. And 33 is just walking it off. Solo doesn't have the range for the miss coil. And 33 is actually going to have some oh. help from Hanskin. Or is he? He's trying to deny himself up to the neutrals. Solo will arrive, but 33 Jesus. denies to the neutrals. That definition of space created there, Toby. Epic Kid missed seven creeps top to chase him to no avail, as Solo also now runs all the way back. No boots and only 275 HP remaining. Alliance getting ahead in literally every possible way you could. It is seven to one four minutes into the game. <laughs> Uh, Hanskin would have loved that regen rune to get the full duration off, but uh, save's going to stay with him. Resolution just having to contest Fada, who's doing these pulls. Hanskin doesn't have an arrow just yet, so they don't have that long range stun to combo with. Ah, this is. Oh, there we go. Buys up bottle. Arrow is now online. First stun into second. It's just simple setups. Coming from Alliance, we talk about ease of draft on day one and day two, and it feels the same here for Alliance. It's not difficult. Vardis fat enough, he'll survive any kind of attack from Resolution to land a secondary stun, and then they just keep going underneath the tower. Resolution slowed up so much first by the time dilation and by the orb. Vardis will probably lose his life here, but it feels worth it. Especially when 33 continues to be unharassed on this top lane. Battling both against Epi and Solo, two melees who just cannot stand in this in this close proximity. Yeah, this is this is looking like the alliance that a lot of people expected showing up. They came fresh off of a land victory over in Sweden, or rather, they're from Sweden, but they were yeah. in the Netherlands. Yes, they were. And now they're here in Germany, looking to repeat. And I, I gotta say, from draft to play, like I don't know what VP really looked to do to. They get to lose no one. Here. Rotation in, Ogre with two points up in the Fire Blast, looking for the extra stun time. They should just get a TP rotation in from Rubik. Now, biggest surprise of the new season for me has got to have been Fada as well. Adjusting to the five, I think a lot faster than a lot mm -hmm. of people would have assumed. I've seen this before. I've done it a couple of times and it, it, it takes a while. You do some really dumb things, but he's gotten to a point where you've got people in the community questioning whether like you have to start banning Jakiro against the Lions because he's just so solid on that hero. Mm -hmm. But Fado was always one of these players where even when he was playing core, he'd still understand the elements of support. Yeah. Mr. Mech mid lane. <laughs> like, like this, he, guy, this guy has played Dota for so long. He understands this game well. He's played with a lot of big captains, and yeah. now he, he gets a chance and to prove it himself. Th that's a good point, because when you think about him from a, as a mid player, right? He was, um, and this isn't meant as criticism, but his style was not your, your flashy all-star. He was a game manager. He was your DK, Viper, Razor. Yep. He did his job. He bought good items and he, he understood what his role was in the game. It's he set the tempo to... with his hero uh, and the items he picked up without it being that flashy. I just killed them all and that's how the tempo was set. Yeah. 
And, and my concern right now for uh, for VP is, well, one, you've got to support a bet. Uh, this is one of, I think it's the best offlane in Dota at the moment, and you've put it onto your five. Mm -hmm. Not really much to help your sniper either. Boy, the Starfall's coming in. Solo's trapping around. TP supports on the way from VP. Save's already gone down with a shrapnel. No one can play from the tree lines. Nico just time walks and TP's out. There's no stuns to stop him. So Fada, he'll lose his life for the trees. The courier, not exactly where I want it to be. But that's a one-for-one -one trade off, but you've got almost all of VP to TP to the bottom lane apart from Epi. And that means now Bristol back. Like this guy was always picked up in the off lanes. Uh, Hans can, is fine. He's got a leap available. Uh, but the Bristol back was always picked up this, as this three roll because when rotations happened, he has this huge amount of damage once he's level six, and he just takes the tower. He's got to be really careful on this. I'm sure I was going to say. Doesn't get the tower top, but the fact that three three in a one on two scenario has taken a top tower. Rather impressive. What are you Hanskin doing here, Hanskin? Trouble. He's got the leap. Yeah, he does. Uh, no one's Ooh. there waiting for him, however, and the attack from no one will finish the job. Get peeped. They have a very defensive observer ward that they've planted inside their own jungle to watch this kind of movement, especially now the T1 tower goes down. Um, it's going to be a lot more useful yeah. if Alliance remain aggressive. And I think they're going to look to do so. A uh, big thing, I understand the sniper, you know, as Alan was saying, sniper's one of those heroes that you just pick against OD. It is a counter. But if the OD stays even or even gets ahead, at a point you're going to get that blink dagger, you're going to have a BKB, and you just get on top of the sniper. It's going to be very important that no one has ideal positioning as this game continues. Yeah. And he is, he is a very talented sniper player. He's got the CS to go with it. So this is... This is a good farmed up CS, so as you said, like, if he's behind, then we'll have problems. But for now, Thunder's Pro, like, it's, they still have opportunities to, to play with. Because you do have this three position, Magnus, you hopefully will get to a point where Resolution can, can start looking at jumps in, and RPs can turn these fights around very, very quickly. You just have to hit it hard and right, and then let Sniper have the space. But it's, it's taking so much time to get there. Meanwhile, Alliance, they're keeping the pressure up. Chasing after solo, cool spray stacks up way too high. No shields will protect yeah. you from this. Uh, support of Baden can do nothing against Bristleback. It's something Will's talked about a lot. Hang on, we're gonna get a fight coming away in a second. They might go nice for Nice observer sentry. Alliance put it down so they can battle against no one. Though three's just gonna stay on top of this sniper. Keep the the cool spray stacks coming up. Doesn't have a lot of life to work with anymore. However, Fada, he'll have to finish the job. But then a salve. Sniper's getting his life back, and Fada just wants to get punch him. him and cancel this. He can punch him and cancel the salve. But now he's surrounded by three different heroes. The arrow Arrow. Flies forward, but then Rubik takes it for the team. The skewer from Resolution pulls Sparta underneath the tier three tower. Yeah. And there's just not much more that Alliance is going to get from this. Very aggressive, but VP bring the entire team to combat it. Yeah. And so Will's talked a lot about a bad and how you address it. It's these disables that Shield can't deal with. You've got three cores on Alliance. Bristol, OD, Void. Abaddon does effectively nothing to prevent what these heroes want to do. You can't deal with the Banish. You can purge off Bristol's Q for a moment, sure. But it's a 1.5 okay. second cooldown. Um, okay. Just checking for a 10 minute rune. <laughs> Nico Baby's had this Chrono Sphere for a while and so far hasn't hasn't had the opportunity to use it. Courier's coming out as well. That's not what that wants to be. Fortify it up after it takes two hits. One each from Fada and Nico. They chase it into the tree line, but six HP is enough for the Drodo to survive. Yep. Nico's going straight for the Maelstrom, one of his uh, favorite builds. He either goes for this or the Diffusal when he's ahead. Uh, in a game like this where you're, you're going to be able to outscale, I think it's the right choice just to get that farming item up, up ASAP, especially when you're the, the real carry for your squad. Yep. I'm uh, loving this from with no one, like where they give him the stacks. He's able to get a hand of Midas, doesn't finish up the treads he could have. Like 10 mm -hmm. minutes in, the Midas is coming on the Courier. You need it. Uh, if you're going to win this game, Sniper's got to be top net worth from 20 minutes till game close. And, and especially with the cooldown reduction talent you're going to pick up at level 10, it's just another way to make that Midas more efficient. Mid tower is going to be the next move for Alliance here. They've got Marana Invis active and Chronosphere. Really like this maneuver. They smoked up. And now look at VP. They've got four heroes all concentrated in their own woods underneath these Alliance wards. Now five. Oh, don't smoke on the obs. <laughs> the way they were grouping up. All right, the sentry, yeah, it finds it. Um, you know, so far so good though. All things considered, the fact that it's only a 1k lead for Alliance, you'd expect that VP would be even further behind based on how that early laning phase went, but 
You know, they're recovering well. The fact that no one was able to get a 10-minute Midas is quite nice for their chances here. Yeah. And we've yet to see a Chronosphere, but Nico Baby, already 4-0-3. He loves to get involved early. I would not be surprised to see him make a maneuver with a Marana Invis very soon. Limp finishing up a Veil. Have that in like 400 gold. As now 3-3 moves to stack Ancients. Will he land it? It looks like... Yes, it's a four stack now. Another reason Bristle should be picked more, because he's literally going to jump up to 5k net worth off of this Veggie Moonlight Shadow. Arrow flies forward, just denies the Invis rune to Solo, will also take his life in the bottom rune. That's Moonlight Shadow being burned pretty early, however. Maybe Photos Pro feel like they can do something themselves. I don't feel like Epi Kid's like ready to fight just yet, and no one's in the same position. It's just so hard for VP to make a move. It's the big issue with the lineup at the moment. You want Ember Spirit to be that guy making movement, but he lost his tower so early. You don't have that ability to push the lane and then cut towards mid, especially when there's a Bristleback who's just nigh indestructible already with 1500 HP and a hood and root. Uh, it's just tough and you're, you're left to having your, all three of your cores farming and look at the supports of VP as well. It's just a Rubik really who could look to make something happen. Did steal Bloodlust though, quite nice, especially when you consider he can just follow no one around and sure he's got that extra farming speed. Solo got caught, got all procced, but Hanskin's going to retreat. Yeah, they just keep chipping away at Solo, but Solo is the only one from Virtus Pro who's really putting himself in a position where Alliance can gank him. Unless they want to get aggressive and move into the VP jungle into the farming area of no one. There's an Observer Ward to give a little bit of information for what they want to do, but even attacking the Tier 1 tower, the wave clear from Virtus Pro is quite effective. It's only a level 2 Shockwave, but they're able to always drag the Creep Wave away from the tower. Sniper can come in if need be. And if Alliance do want to fight underneath the tower, it's just Shrapnel. It's a lot of range and they don't have any information behind the lines and they don't have any easy way to jump unless Hanskin finds his target and now no one. Oh, there's a one leap that doesn't perfectly work. And in fact, he even gets stolen by the Rubik. He was hoping for the arrow, just a little late on the steal. Pipe? Oh my god, there's a pipe on the Bristleback, man. That yeah. removes Shrapnel and Ember Spirit's Flame Guard pretty much from the game. And it's 14 minutes in. 3k lead for Alliance. You can see, because they have the ability to farm Ancients and VP does not, that's a big part of where this gold disparity comes from. Because Bristol's able to play the triple camp, no one on VP can do the same at their respective shrine because they simply can't clear Ancients just yet. Yeah. And he's taken six camps of them already. It'll, it'll get easier once... Um, like, you've got the empowered Ember Spirit, so that's, that's one way you can get through it. But he needs to tank harder. VP might look to make a move. Haven't seen an RP yet. Perhaps that'll be coming up soon. But Rezo is going for that tank build. Mech is purchased <laughs> not a blink dagger. 50 minute rune about to spawn. I love watching Rubik with the way his cape jumps around when he goes for the leap. Trouble for Ogre getting Searing chained up. Arrow will fly forward from Hanskin. Threads the needle between the two players of Virtus Pro. As they wait for the 15 minute bounty yep. runes. Bristol will take both off the top. Run in this. In fact, Ember. Spirits himself back over to 33 detection. while the jump oh. comes forward looking for the Jesus. Chronosphere with the hammer. Oh, no one on resolution thought there was still going to be safe there. They thought wrong. Arrow flies in. That'll hit the stun over on Solo. Borrow time will break him free as Nico gets in front with a time walk. Body blocking up Solo. He's trying to reach the tier 3 tower. Oh. The banishment's there from Limp. You may need one more hit to finish this job. Okay, they need a couple more with the one charges. But it's still done from Alliance and a perfect chrono and the two perfect targets. Yeah, uh, VP just caught napping there, man. You know Alliance is in the area. You saw multiple heroes. There's a Murano on the enemy team. You've you've got to respect the invis. You don't have a sentry down. And they even Alliance even had high ground vision. That was the easiest setup for three kills I've ever seen. And they also collected the both bounty rooms top for free. You, you really can't ask for more. Um, love the build from Limp, too. Just getting the early Veil, Treads, Triple Null. Very slot efficient. Effectively maxed out his next item. Blink means he'll be six slotted, in theory. You know, very efficient. Null Talismans, Wraith Bands, Bracers. These are the most cost efficient items in the game right now. And it ensures that once he has the Blink, he'll just jump right on top of no one. What's he supposed to do? He's got a Midas. He's going Maelstrom next. But until he has a BKB, this is... 
hero's squishier than his five position. Yep. Which means the rest of Virtus Pro now have to start stepping up. Epi, Epi Kid needs to be the man on the front lines working with the resolution. But, but if and they have to fight while Chrono and, and Hammer is down. Like that's that's gonna be the only options for them. And they're coming in. RP is available. There's a first searing chains over on the bristleback. I know things are not, not working out well for him, but they it feels like there's no other choice for Virtus Pro. If they don't get control of this game right now through a couple of kills, get some momentum on their heroes. And doing it in the next 30 seconds while Chronosphere isn't available. Oh, they're just backing up. They saw no one arrive, a deep observer and sentry planted down by Alliance. They've got all the information. This is uh, this is a no-go zone. I mean, you have a Mjolnir finished on Nico. He's just farming topside safely. He'll have Chrono up in 10 seconds. So Alliance, no, look, we'll just plant ourselves behind this Bristle. How how does VP kill Bristleback? He has 2,000 HP and a pipe. Soon to have a Vanguard on top. Like this, this is the strength of this hero. It's your it's your big watermelon that you just plant on your objective. VP, you can bring five heroes. You cannot initiate on this target. You would lose that oh, fight. This is nice. Observer and Sentry down for Virtus Pro. They understand the Moonlight Shadow Alliance are moving up. Resolution, he's standing on top of the Sentry Ward. Almost feels like Bates gets a double RP off, allowing no one the time to attack him, but that defensive imprisonment, it's saving the faceless void, and Resolution's kind of trapped here. A bad staying in the middle of the fight, too. Here comes Epi Kid. It's a one-for-one -one trade off. The two big AoE controllers are down. Limp is on the run, stuns onto Solo. Limp still built up a hell of a lot of int, but he doesn't have enough life to fight with, and that that's why the spirit jump forward. Defensive imprisonment. Epic Kid still waiting for the fight. Solo is going to be there with him to bring down the OD. And now they can move to the Bristleback. And we test your theory, Kyle. Can they actually kill him off? If no one can keep the range, if no one can not catch that arrow, they can just walk away from everything. <laughs> there's, was, there's no engagement to happen after this by the looks of it. That was huge from VP. And Nico Baby, a little over eager there. You cannot allow yourself to be initiated on. A big reason for that was they were baiting Bristle. They were giving away information to VP. He's showing bottom. We're going to make this cool move as four. And that works if Virtus Pro is caught napping. They were not. They were prepared. They got that initiation on Nico. If he drops a chrono on two, both heroes are just immediately dead, yep. as we saw earlier on that bottom shrine. But really nice job by VP read the movement. They know that th th this is a play Alliance is going to make, and you've either got to allow somebody to just die split or pray that you bait a better engagement. They uh, recover a little ground here as we're just a one minute away from those bounties. You won't have Chronosphere for that engagement if Alliance look to take another. Yep, and this is this is that window. VPC are wide open. A minute of time. They can try and take this T1 tower on bottom lane, clearing through ways very quickly thanks to not just Ember being the natural clearer he is, but having the impound buff up from Rez. And no one's positioning in the last fight felt really, really good. I even like the fact that Resolution held his skewer, yep. making sure he what like it's like, you, you RP2, you feel like you want to skewer two heroes back into the tower. Nah. But it's, it's going to hurt you so hard in the long run. And this, oh, the uh, short run. You know, this VP lineup, they were behind. But this is this is a sniper on top of the net worth charts. Your Ember Spirit went for this Drums Maelstrom build. They, they didn't sacrifice their item progression, even though they were suffering uh, as far as map control goes. So if you're Alliance, you've got to make sure you continue to execute. The onus is on you. They get the Roche kill right away. Really nice. Now they're going to yep. move forwards. Chrono up in 10. They smoke again. They know VP is going to be contained bottom side, and they have this nice ward on the high ground. They see no one. They see Solo. They see Rubik. They're coming right for him. Yeah, all that information. DD this would Nico. allow them to get to get Roche out in the first place. Solo's putting down his sentry wars just in case anyone's trying any kind of shenanigans. But they really need to get rid of that obs and sentry. VP have had no idea this is here. It's one minute away from a full duration ward. So the Moonlight Shadow stolen by save. Now Moonlight Shadow going the other way around. What have we got? Time Walk stolen. And everyone's just bailing out. The Ember's adding a lot of pressure to the Tier 2 tower on bottom lane. While Sniper's getting to farm up on the top. They know this is going to turn into a trade-off solo. The Borrowed Time trying to actually give him that space. Or give his team the space, but yeah, he's oh, dead. But nobody's really given away is 36 intelligence to limp. Oh, very true. And the hammer is up. One of the big downsides of the Abaddon. Yeah, sure. Please, by all means, heal. And let me keep beating into you. What was it? Uh, we're talking about during the draft. Hey, this, this line from VP is really cool, but uh, when you've got Bristle and you've got OD, both get stronger as these fights continue on. And what does Void do? He also delays it by putting down the Chronosphere. Yep. Like, it's, it's so difficult to escape 
that but prolonged look, fight. Sniper, he's gonna have, no one's got his BKB in what? 400 gold or so. If he can get that off, even if he were to get chronoed, it's tough for Alliance to actually take him down. Uh, especially when you consider a large part of the Void's damage are those Mjolnir procs. They aren't going to do anything under the cover of a BKB. It also feels hard for Alliance to push high ground. Yeah. It's kind of weird to say that. I think it's going to get a lot harder once Resolution has his Blink Dagger, because then you've got those Blink Skewer opportunities on 33, who's not going to be the fastest hero moving side to side to dodge it. But if you pull him under the Tier 4 towers, oh, it's very well, isolated. Try as problematic. Once. Aegis Immortal's gonna break off for the Faceless Void. He's just gonna get Meanwhile, RP'd. 33 running in towards no one, and Faceless Void has Chrono, but there's oh, your RP! And OD jumped in as well! Lip got hit, and he's dropped the hammer for the pickup. He's still got it available, trying to build up this int. It's up at 12, drops it on Epic Kid, but he still ends up dying without finding the kill. Protection was there, the Meg Charge gave the life back. And now 33 is on the run. Save's got time walk off cooldown, same with the Telekinesis in one second time, so he can go for the jump and pull him back, but they won't do it. VP what? is just very happy with what they got. I want to see that again in slow motion. Th that's just terrible decision making from Limp. You can play that in multiple different ways. Either one, blink outside the range of the RP <laughs> as your void respawns, or two, if you're going to make that play, blink in early, get the aggressive RP, even if then the mag responds to get you first, void comes out, he's not stunned, he's going to get a chrono off. You can never put yourself in a position we here we both go. get RP. Here we go. Tier four towers. It's very well, isolated. Try as problematic. And here we are as well. Gonna break off for the faceless void. We'll we'll try that and again. There we go. Hey, well, what a what a sexy dulcet tone, and that weird Australian. Do you, I do you ever listen to your own cast? Because I can't do it. I I, I actually feel I, I, I forced myself to do it very early on for reviews. Mm. Um, but eventually, I just hate myself. Yeah, me uh, too, dude. I don't know how the community puts up with me. I, I listen to myself. I'm like, God, that's terrible. Like, like you, you have someone like Cap who's like, oh, yeah, like my voice is so great. Uh, and that's not how Cap sounds. Um, no. See, I can't even I, I, see, I can't even mimic to sound great. Like, if, if I sound like better than Cumberbatch, I'd be like, hell yes, this would be the greatest cast ever. Well, a little trouble for Ember Spirit. Arrowed up, locked in, and down he'll go. Yeah, yeah. Close the point. We both sound stupid. Why the hell do people even want to hear us? Anyway. <laughs> the self-burn, the most effective. You know, the only time I actually like my voice is like when you're five days into an event and I you start- You really talk about your voice for someone that and, doesn't and, like their voice. And, and I start hitting Barry White mode and it's really, really raspy. B Bar what? Barry White has the voice of an angel. I know. So but when my voice gets really, really tight, I drop like three octaves. I see. And then- then it sounds good. Uh huh. But only then. We'll go to. We'll have to review the tapes later. Uh, much like Alliance is going to need to review that fight in the event they were to drop this game. The gold disparity hasn't changed, but bounties are up in 30. VP should be able to control both of the ones on the bottom side. 3-3 uh, three, three beating into the top tower. But keep in mind, I love the hero, but he has sacrificed his item progression for his team. He's got the pipe and the crimson. His damage output is not there, mm -hmm. nor is he really able to close gap on Nick or um, on no one too effectively any longer. You know what I always want to feel like I want to see on him is like a silver edge on no one. <laughs> it's like, what, what, what have we got that's really going to mess from range? We got coming down. No, it's just going to be a bracer. A bad and becoming tankier and yep. tankier as life goes on. You got a BKB coming out on Epic Kid as soon as he finishes this one. Creep, mm -hmm. sure there's one on Void, but... And there's one coming for Limp. Uh, this is the anti-OD item, though. If you get your BKB off, it does not matter if you're disabled. Like, the OD, the Marana, the Ogre, these heroes do nothing any longer. And Bristol's damage output is not what it could be because of this defensive item build that he's chosen to go for. Um, Ram Rezo, not Ramses, is soon going to be finishing off his Blink Dagger. Not bad. The, the, in fact, if you look at the, it is a, still a huge lead for Alliance. A big part of that is because if you look at the net worth, compare the offlaners. That's a 6K gap. That is 75% of this lead. And while sure you'd like your mag to have more farm, like what would more items on him actually do? He's mostly here for the empower. And at some point he's going to land an RP once he picks up yeah. blink. So. And by farming up this top wave right now, he's going to get that blink dagger. There it is. So 33 as well as uh, Nico can keep the pressure on the top lane. Oh, that, okay. Okay. Well. I think no one, no one sold his Maelstrom by accident. We saw it would like come back up on the right no, side no, no, of the no, screen. No. So it, it came back up on the right side of the screen because he sent it back to base on the courier. I don't think 
so. Look at his net worth. It would have been higher. He was like 1,500 ahead a few moments ago. True. Maybe he did. Like the, it was definitely on the couriers being sent back to base and then coming out. So I don't no, know. Because if it was no, because no, no, you wouldn't. Around. You wouldn't see the notification on the right if he hadn't purchased it. He definitely bought mm. a new maelstrom, and he mm. only has one. It's okay. That is unfortunate. And also, yeah, why is Alliance 9k ahead? It was five. <laughs> it was. There's got to be something going here. Yeah, something is suspect. Something is definitely suspect. This is not going to buy. And VP, just when they got a foothold back in, it, it's the mental anguish that a mistake <laughs> like that makes. It can really affect your chances moving forwards. VP now looking to get a little aggressive, but didn't find an opening. Alliance wisely retreated onto a fortified position near their own high ground. This mid tower has got to die if VP want to establish foothold in the enemy jungle. Right now, they're limited to their side of the river until they can take out that tower. Man, I, I just wouldn't expect something like that of no one. <laughs> Why not? Well... One of the best in the world? <laughs> I'm sorry, you're saying you can be the best in the world and still make mistakes. That's exactly. So. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can feel your point coming from a mile off. This is, uh, this has suddenly got troubles with me. It never looks, feels good when the four position on the enemy team is a Greaves and your three position just has the mech. Invis pop. They're going to look to get aggressive here. Limp might find no one. He's got BKB TP, however, and he's going to use it. Void should not be able to close the gap in time. <laughs> Limp, man. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the first game of the day, right? It's just the first game of the day. Yeah. I'm not warmed up. Hey, and I will say, as uh, there are members of the Twitch chat community, I'm sure, reminding me, it's better to sell your item by accident. <laughs> than to misplace it on the ground. It could be worse. Hey, I wasn't going to bring it up, Kyle. Uh, and, uh, JJ. <laughs> what? He what? circled your exact spot of the crime. Ah, uh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, buddy. That's right. We, nev we never forget. Great smoke wraparound coming in from Virtus Pro. They are going to look for their target. The scan comes out from the dire. They're thinking about if Alliance are near Roshan, which they're not, so Epic Kid will show himself on bottom. You need a fight if you're VP. This whole game is going to come down to initiation. Think it's the RP versus the Chrono. It's the Sniper and the OD. You want to be able to use this big ability to take out that high damage dealing hero right away. Whatever team is successful most likely wins this next engagement. And they all alliance had vision. They got the mag. Oh, great arrow. Able to connect RP. the BKBs playing in the background with the uh, with the RP coming out and the Chronosphere. Who's going to go down first? And all of this one, Fargo's actually survived, but no one. He'll be locked down and controlled by Nico. So they've lost their big parts of the damage, and Ogre is the only sacrifice so far from Alliance. But Limp is building up a lot of int. He has dropped the hammer, but he still hits hard. That's going to be 52 int. Yep. Now on that OD, hoping to catch any more from Virtus Pro. And uh, honestly, I got to give the <clears throat> the mistake made there is is on Solo once again. The same thing as that earlier fight around 10 minutes, the bottom shrine occurs here. There's no sentry down. Rezo's positioning is where it needs to be on top of the hill, guarding, trying to find this OD. He would have, but out of the cover of Invis, he just gets astral because there's a ward on the high ground. You can't allow this to happen. If you want to play in the enemy jungle and take a fight from a high ground, you need sentries, Solo. You cannot come to this fight without one. Oh, it, it went down, but it was too late. That's just, that's not acceptable. That spells a lot of problems now for Virtus Pro as their tier two tower. Gonna get beaten down. This is the last remaining outer tower for Virtus Pro. Not able to find the damage, being split in two different parts. A fortification. Will dissuade Alliance enough that they'll retreat from the Tier 2 tower. Remember, they don't have Chronosphere, they don't have Sandy's Eclipse. So while these are not up, they should at least give a little bit more respect to Virtus Pro. But VP don't have their RP for 40 seconds either. Moonlight Shadow movement from Alliance. Yeah, there's a BKB up on Limp as well. So he's a lot more formidable nowadays. If you check out the items. You have an Ags on the Ember Spirit coming up soon. There is a Blink on the Rubik now as well. Scotty soon to be complete on no one. Looks like Hanskin's going to go for a Lotus Orb here. And 3-3 going for the AC. Like that item choice oh, a lot. Mid. 
Catching out the Bristleback, pick him up, throw him back down again, having to battle inside the tribunal, secured a long way up over towards Norm, but now Limp comes in for the defensive imprisonment. Solo will stay on him, a secondary shrapnel being planted, arrow flies forward, won't hit anybody, 33, still trying to run out with his Crimson Guard, he just tanks for so long, even the OD has to start getting chipped away by no one, because they just have to find a different target, 33 feels invincible, a blink forward from Limp, this time he's taking Sniper out, the RP, able to connect from Resolution, but Nico, the skewer, they're inside the Chrome Sphere, he's got so many of his own teammates, while Solo and Resolution trying to hit into them, but the Sniper goes down, he's the bigger damage, on 57 HP, OD's able to Blink away to safety. 33 gets the double kill and the Chrono. It felt rough with the Lions being trapped in there, but without the Sniper hitting any damage, it's all what? Alliance. What? What? The Bristleback, Toby. You know what 33's trying to do? <laughs> Absorb the punishment. It's his entire hero's purpose in this game. He's itemized for it. He's got 23 armor, nearly 3,000 health. 25 health regen on his level 20 talent. Uh -huh. You cannot do this if you're Virtus Pro. It is child's play now for the Void to identify, oh look, there's the sniper. I'm going to chrono him. He is going to die. We have won the fight. We've got Roshan. We've got a 15k gold lead. And at this point, Alliance is rolling. Y you can't target this Bristle, Toby. You got to ignore him, get the OD, get the Void. The only appropriate targets. And you can even see Nico knows that. Third item, Satanic. The status resist to help deal with the RP, the t health regen, the HP pool. He is not an actual target either. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you're VP? How do you actually win fights any longer? I so say you need more damage. You almost need like an extra Maelstrom over on a sniper. Uh, blink away from Rubik. He will dodge. The gank coming in from Farda, creating a little bit of space for himself and his team. Oh my god, they need that. This, it's it's going to come down to high ground now. If he could do the split pushing, he's picked up an Agadim Scepter on the Ember Spirit. As yep. long as he's being empowered up, they can get that little side but, lane push. But, it's the, but if you look at the towers, they still got tier one towers in mid as well as top. Side lane push or not, Alliance still are not being pressured. That top tower has taken... A grand total of 15 damage yeah. in this 33, I, I, four, 34 I, minute game. I fail to see what Epic Kid's item progression is actually going to do to change the status quo here. He's the top net worth on his team, but how, how is Ags going to be effective? You know, no one on Alliance is going to put themselves in a position to get jumped on except for this Bristle. And Lincoln's is your next choice? How is that going to save you from a Chronosphere? You need raw damage output right now. There's an AC on Bristle. You're not going to kill anything at this rate. The pressure is coming now. Tier 2 tower on bottom will finally be removed. And Alliance, Aegis the Immortal on the Faceless Void. He will be one of the first ones up the hill. Sniper is not there ready to defend. In fact, right now Abaddon's the only one that's there. Resolution's beginning his TP in. But it's like they're giving up this Tier 3 tower for free. RP is off cooldown. With Sniper arriving, some chip damage into Nico. OD jumps forward, already starts low front of Baden. They've already triggered the borrow time on him. Nico, Chronosphere, he caught no one. That's the big target underneath the fountain. It won't even matter, no one goes down. He'll have buyback available, so will the Magnus. And now they have to go ham here, Virtus Pro, to make this worthwhile. But 33, he's the frontline tank. Limp still ready to go. He's a 24 install and drops the hammer. The BKB is good from no one, but it will be a dieback if he cannot get some extra distance. The arrow fight spot of five seconds. Oh over on Magnus. God. Nico jumps for that one as well. Even the sad trombone is no one trolling his own teammates. A skewer pull Nico into the pit. One attack from the fountain will be all they get. And GG is what Alliance will get. Game one goes their way. Yep. And Virtus Pro, it feels rough. A, a big issue with this game for VP. Well crafted lineup from Alliance. They had multiple heroes that could make themselves targets. VP don't have one. There isn't a single hero that can initiate contact, that can take some punishment. Whereas Alliance, they have 3 3 just diving onto the sniper. Nico Baby with that increased time walk range. You can even see Rezo's face. He, what, what is he supposed to do? Good question. Very, very good question. Something is not right for Virtus Pro. They need to work it out and they need to work it out now because if they can't get a single point out of this, then there is the chance that the Fighting Pandas or Viking will be able to contest them depending on the results God, from man. the other two series. VP, I think they've got the record, right, for most Mercedes. Imagine they, if they, they were do. eliminated in group stage. Not a good start at all for this roster. Well, well, this really just shows you too. The brands change.